I've had so many people message me about this story okay. over the period of the last several days. And yes, Tucker Carlson totally red pilled my nation and mm. it is trending. So what did he red pill them about? Uh, well, there's several different things, but to kind of give you guys a little bit of a backstory. Yes, I did grow up in Australia. I lived there my whole life. I was born in Perth, moved to the East Coast a couple years later and lived there up until I moved to the United States when I was like 23. So there are 23 years of my life and my entire life, my entire life, every single um, ceremony, school assembly, when we would gather for Anzac Day, which is uh, the day that we co commemorate our uh, fallen soldiers, etc. Every single time the ceremony starts off, it's always to acknowledge that we, the white people there, and just anybody there, not even just necessarily white people, we do not have any claim to that land. Hmm. This is Aboriginal land, the native people of Australia, and therefore we do not own it and we don't have any claim of it. And there's always this like undercurrent of like guilt that was always attached and associated with that. Mind you, I didn't really know that at the time and I, I would have never really kind of rationed that logically. But looking back now, it makes so much sense. So Tucker Carlson kind of encapsulated this perfectly. Uh, we're going to go ahead and play this first clip and then I'll give you guys a little bit more insight. This was the prison that you turned into paradise. Hmm. You have nothing to apologize for at all. And yet... At every turn, they're making you apologize. I have never seen a society more under attack than the one you're living in now, and for less justification. Every time a commercial airline lands, every time any kind of ceremony opens, they send you the message that you're on someone else's land. What? And I'm thinking to myself, look, and this is no slight against the people they're talking about at all, but it's, I don't know, it's Australian land. And you're all Australians. I love him for that. I love him and for that. No one's had the balls to say that ever that I've oh, seen. You know, wow. I, I guess my first question is, why would you ever put up with that? And that's not a question that I can answer because I'm not Australian. I didn't hear what you said, but I, I think I agree with you. <laughs> but my, my second question is, who is this helping? Who is this helping? Is it helping the people who are supposedly being honored by these displays? No, of course not. It has nothing to do with them. Now, we have something very similar going on in my country where the people in charge trying to make you feel bad about things that people you never met did hundreds of years ago. You can pause it, Kelly. Yeah. It's okay. But you're I, I, so, so, I mean, just, just so I'm clear, sweetie, so I'm, I know he mentioned it. So every time an airplane lands in Australia, they remind you that that land isn't really, like, it's racist. So that's, Rob, can you imagine, like, landing on a Southwest flight? And they're like, hey, guys, just before you get off, Y'all stole this from the Indians. And Good luck in Tampa! <laughs> and they do things to, to respect and honor the Indians here, right? Like there's Indian reservations where only like Indian law applies, et cetera, et cetera. But from what I've understood as well, this situation has become a lot more work and a lot more virtue signally um, since I left close to like seven, eight years ago now. So it's gotten to the point now where primary school is, like kids like six to 12 years old, and now being taught in school rituals, they need to tap the ground here. I wrote it down. They yeah. tap the ground, hands on the ground. This always was and always will be Aboriginal land. Oh, shit. From a child. No, that, from that's, six, That's called seven, indoctrination. Eight years old, dude. Oh, my God. And so, uh, yeah, we can go ahead and skip to the next slide, Kelly. Um, Kelly, next slide. Oh, sorry. Uh, this one here. Could we just uh, zoom in on it a little bit? I really love what this uh, tweet says. Um, so I'm so happy that uh, Tucker Carlson is talking about on drip. Every time you uh, hear or see a formal thank you to the indigenous, indigenous people for letting you live on their land, let your ears perk up. Listen carefully. It's just a matter of time before they will say, now your land is our land and it will be taken out from under your feet, taken out from under your home. Um, we can go ahead over to the next one, please. And uh, there, I, I think if we're going to the next slide, it may be Pauline Hansen. 
Um, so this is another kind of anecdote. You know, people have been saying that the Australian Defence League is really struggling to recruit. They're struggling to get people in their army. Well, is it any surprise when from a child you are literally taught that you don't own this land, you don't hold any allegiance to it, you don't have any ownership over it? Why would somebody want to fight and die for a country that they're told is not theirs, right? Um, and Tucker really drives the point home. I believe it's in the next slide over. Actually, this is a, a, a one of our uh, liberal officials, which liberals kind of the opposite to what it, it the is. The liberal, here. she's cool. She's Republican. Okay, yes, that's so yes. weird. Why, because so, they're so far left that liberals Republican? Is that why? It's just op it's labor and liberal. Lib labor uh, is the liberals, like and liberals are the Republicans for gotcha. some reason. What she, what's her name? Uh, and what did she say? Pauline Hanson. So let's go ahead and play it, and she's okay. basically echoing Tucker's sentiments. Okay, let me hear her maiden speech my opening line was you know I was born here so were my children my parents where the hell do I go when people claim that I don't have any connection with this land well, I'm sorry I do there's no other land that I feel that I would fight for defend that I'm so proud of as I do Australia and the same with my children and the many migrants that have come here have embraced Australia and our values, our culture, and they see themselves as Australians. But I get uh, really upset when people say we have no connection with the land, that this is um, Aboriginal land, that we stole it. Well, I didn't steal it. This is what's happened in the past, as happened throughout the world with many countries. How Until pretty much every nation was formed. accept and recognise each other as Australians and start working together on an individual needs basis, not based on race, um, we are going to be more divisive as the time goes. And I see people that have jumped onto the bandwagon, the Aboriginal industry, to milk it for what it's worth. Mm -hmm. And that's what I get, I get annoyed about. So. Thank well, she's you, not Kelly. messing around. And so finally, Tucker Carlson really drives the point home in this next slide where he literally says, anybody who has ever told you that this land isn't yours, there's one specific reason for that, and that's because they plan to take it from you. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a really impactful statement by Tucker, so let's listen. I'm telling you, anyone who tells you this is not your country will take it away from you and plans to do that. And they do plan to do that. That's super obvious to me. It's really obvious to me. And this is not an attack on, you know, any other country. By the way, I know you all are completely paranoid about China. And you have every reason to be. <laughs> I don't fault the Chinese for that. If I were the Chinese, the first thing I would do is take over Australia. <laughs> it's the first thing I would Makes a well, really great I'm, point there. So, guys, there's so much going on in Australia. Cashless society, digital ID. We're literally brainwashed from day one that this is not our land. So I want to get your guys' thoughts. What does this mean for Australia? Um, for me, I'm really hoping that Tucker's speech really affects the hearts and minds of the Australian citizens because this is really obvious to me. I'm sure it's obvious to you guys. Well, I, I, oh, go go ahead. Ahead. No, Brandon, go ahead. No, it's just they're, um, they're just able to fast track what they're trying to do to the rest of the world in Australia because they don't have the foundation of a constitution and they've like been embedding people with that sense of guilt for the like uh, however long they've mm -hmm. been there and um i'd be one uh curious what the ab uh what are they called the aboriginals. aboriginals yeah i'd be curious what their input was to this because what exactly did it look like before um the uh, the british people started showing up there and um being culturally australian you know was there any buildings there was no, there it was tell completely you running water like, there yeah. or was it just I'll like i'll tell a you what yeah, it looked like Connor, Connor yeah, go ahead. because I, i've been looking into this recently okay. uh from conversation i've had with amy and just things i've seen going on right now uh, Amy, you mentioned that kids put their hands on the ground and do a chant of mm -hmm. this was this always was and always will be Aboriginal land. Well, mm -hmm. let's discuss what Aboriginal land is, mm -hmm. because some recent archaeological uh, research into ancient remains and ancient civilizational relics that have been mm -hmm. found out in Australia indicate that the current Aboriginal population is not the original inhabitants of Australia. It seems like they actually came from a nearby island chain after the people who lived there originally mostly died out or were wiped out through warfare, which wow. means if that's true, this, this is still kind of breaking like the, the genetic link between the original inhabitants and the aborigines is not very clearly established now. Mm -hmm. It's been challenged. Right. If that's true, that means the aborigines got their land the same way everybody else did. They showed up and they took it. They either found a place where nothing was going on and they built a civilization, mm -hmm. or they found people who already lived somewhere, killed them, and took their stuff. Yep. Which means, hey, congratulations, you guys are exactly equivalent to the rest of civilization. So what, exactly what there is, is nothing special about you. But 
Brandon, you asked what was going on in Australia yeah, before the, the British regions. decided to send all their prisoners there. Uh, same thing that was happening in North America. Same thing that was happening in South America. The civilizations that lived there were small, violent, uh, nomadic tribes that barely. Oh, you mean they were innocent, peaceful, and just mind no. their own. No, <laughs> all the mind the only own. thing they accomplished was getting pretty good at killing each other. Yeah. There and and the the evidence shows that the Aboriginal society was light years behind where it should have been given how long they were there. Yep. So what that means is that for thousands of years when they lived there, they accomplished nothing. Mm -hmm. yep. If you had given them another 15,000 years to inhabit that land, oh, cool. they'd still be in mud huts and loincloths because they weren't going anywhere. Mm -hmm. right. So to say this is Aboriginal land as you touch the paved streets of Sydney, mm -hmm. as you look at the, the, the skyscrapers and the Sydney Opera House mm -hmm. of you know the, these beautiful cities that Nobody built that before the Europeans got there. This yeah. is m maybe it's their land, but it's certainly the uh, Europeans who built everything on top of it. Mm -hmm. And you can't even you, you can credit it to Europeans because that's where the Australians came from. But they're not European anymore. Uh, yeah. That that broadcaster, I forget what her name was, Amy. Um, yeah. yeah. What she was saying, she might be white, but she's not European. Mm hmm. She's Australian. It, yeah, she is Australian because you are from the place where you were born and where your civilization is anchored and where your family has its roots. Mm -hmm. So, okay, kick all the white people out of Australia. Where do they go? Yeah. Do, 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 do you trace their ancestry back far enough? Well, okay, you you came from England and your people came from Italy, so everybody's got to go back there. Well, those places are also made up of people groups that moved around and conquered and took land and wiped out their enemies. So how far back are you supposed to take this? Well, here's the thing, they don't the really care. They just want to take the land they from white people. Land. Exactly. And guys, and, and, and then Brandon, I'm going to come yeah. to you. And guys, I just I want to take this moment to just give a shout out to Benjamin Franklin, James Madison, Alexander Hamilton, uh, George Washington for writing a piece of document that gave us mm -hmm. fucking guns. Because if you yep. guess what, if they had guns, trust me, they'd be singing different tunes. All this. Mm -hmm. Or everything that's happening is is from a society that cannot arm itself, that pumps fear into the government. And that's why our government is constantly trying to take our freaking guns. It ain't gonna happen, Captain. Mm -hmm. So I wanna I just wanna say thank God the people that started this whole thing went, oh my god, uh guys, this power is gonna get crazy. Let's A let them talk freely, and number two, we gotta give them guns yeah. because we're gonna kill all of them. And that's, where, that's where it went bad for them. So there's this thing called the Port Arthur Massacre in the early 90s in Australia. That's when Australia took all the private um, citizens' guns, mm -hmm. and that's when it all started going downhill. Weird. Because they folded under it. They didn't have a constitution that stressed the importance of having guns. So, oh. you know, look what happens to a society when you lose that. China lost that. Russia lost that. And they have no all say All laws, now. Brandon. Thank um, God we're here. But, um, you know, this is um all coming down from the people who run the world. And, I mean, we're, like, we're learning more about that behind the scenes who actually runs the world. But it's really like this um, originating like European nobility that's still pulling the strings right now. And the reason they're saying this thing to the um, Australians, the reason they're telling us to feel guilty for that we owe reparations to Native Americans, because they're trying to build this sense of a one world system where we don't own the land or we aren't entitled to the land. But exactly. if you really wanted to play that game out and say like, oh, you took that person's land, you took that person's land. All right. How far are you going to trace that back? Because there was somebody here before the Native Americans, too. And mm -hmm. there was somebody here before them. Of so course. like yep. at the end of the day, it's like about who like where we are now. We conquered certain land the, the things are more barbaric at a certain time it's more civilized now but it, it is what it is yeah dinosaurs are here too we're gonna start Con giving right. reparations yeah, right. yeah, we're gonna give reparate we're gonna find alligators because they're <laughs> alligators are in the family alligators are gonna be like i'll take you i guarantee you they would if the media told them oh, to <laughs> so get this get this there are also land acknowledgements for the non-human inhabitants oh of the land in I australia uh, I don't think it's Australia. I think it, this was going on in the U.S. a while back. Oh, no. I forget what event it was, but it was some, you know, big eco rights mm -hmm. thing oh, where they start their event acknowledging, you know, the, the Native American tribes this was stolen from and, and the civilizations that came before them. And also the Paleolithic giant sloths, woolly mammoths and woolly rhinoceroses oh, that lived here before the advent of human civilization. Not satire? Not, oh, not for real? Or real. real. Because oh, no. not only do you have to acknowledge... 
the tribes that lived there and whatever groups came before them. You also have to acknowledge the ground sloths that, that inhabited the land. <laughs> oh you stole my. it from the sloths, Amy. You you jerk. You, you didn't think of the Amy, what the hell is your problem? Dude, I'm crying. This is <laughs> wild. <laughs> yes. And that is that is the insidious, incoherent nature of land acknowledgements. Like uh, I, just a couple weeks ago, went on an oh anniversary God. trip to Canada. Yeah. On our Air Canada flight, the in-flight safety video began by saying, we acknowledge the indigenous lands we're flying over. See? It's like, as we were flying over it, I looked out the window. I didn't see anything that wasn't built by European <laughs> colonists. Yeah. At, at, same thing. It would be exactly uh, like it was 10,000 years ago. Mm. People killing each other in the deep woods wearing buffalo skins. They Rob, nothing else. Oh, Rob, what do you think? I agree. Okay. <laughs> That's all you Rob, have to say, well, Rob? Rocky, mate. Oh, okay. Well, 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 well cause we'll Rob, complete opinion. Like, can you imagine your kid, Rob, every day at school, <laughs> having to put their hand on the ground and going, this land ain't my land, this land ain't my land. Well, I'll, in this country, we can't call it Indian style anymore because uh, that's offensive to Native Americans. Uh, oh, yeah, sitting so in style? I mean, what I've always heard about Australia, maybe I'm incorrect 100%, but what I've always been told is that what the totalitarian efforts that they try in Australia are things that they test there to see what would work in mm -hmm. other established countries. It's a test bed. Test it's a test bed. And bring but, it but, to uh, places like the United States. Mm -hmm. So how far off are we from? Digital ID. Mm -hmm. well, what's I mean, how far off are we to giving well, up well, land? Well, and it keeps going down. I'm telling you right now, guys. I know I just said it, but having an armed, like civilian population, is the mm -hmm. only reason they haven't completely well, taken over. Because they would do exactly. You just nailed it. Mm -hmm. Whatever they're doing there. They would do here, but they know if they get to a certain point, mm -hmm. all everything is finito. Well, how long has reparations been a serious conversation? We give reparations in Australia. If you're Aboriginal, you wow. can go to school, an expensive private school, for basically free. Like one twelfth of the tuition cost, even if you're like one sixteenth Aboriginal. Wow. Yeah, and like your great helped, great, great like grandma. Yeah. <laughs> that that like, has not helped the fact that the Austra uh, the Australian Aborigines are like the lowest IQ population on the planet. Exactly. All that free education has not helped that in the slightest. Mm -hmm. nope. So it's like almost as if you can't educate your way out of that yep. and you're just kind of stuck there. You, yeah. need, you need to integrate culturally. Same mm -hmm. thing that's happened with uh, American Indians mm -hmm. where they are stuck on reservations in poverty because we have to pretend like you know, Protected. you can you can recapture the spirit of the Great Plains by yeah, bullshit. making meth and chipping and selling yeah, turquoise jewelry. Yeah. yeah, like it, yeah. It, that's not to anyone's benefit. Yeah, not, mm -hmm. The I mean, benefit now is integrating into the successful society that came after them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because that's the only way you preserve what's left. Rob, you have one final yeah. thought before we uh, sign off? Uh, you guys didn't like my Australian? Oh, when I said crikey, mate. I like <laughs> it. Oh, no. I, I have was a great. quick one. Well, Brandon, go ahead so and close. The Five Eyes Nations, what is it? It's um, uh, America, UK, Canada, uh, Australia, New Zealand. Yeah. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So those, those four countries pay very close attention to the similarities between what the governments are trying to do there because that's the testing that you're mentioning. And um, out of those four, five countries, I believe America is the only one where um, citizens are allowed to own guns. Definitely not Australia, not UK. No, none of them. It's just us, bro. Yeah, so they're able, to, they're able to do it and push it farther in those countries than they are here. But it, it, make no mistake, if we didn't have guns, they'd be doing the exact same thing. 100%. But we could also still have influence over those civilizations. We have to just get them to the point where they're civilly disobedient and rowdy enough to actually run for public office and take back the majority of the control there. Because I know there's um, Australians who are pissed off, and you know they talk to me on my neck, and they say they're afraid to actually speak out and Wow. Do something oh, about it. Australians, really? uh, Australians yeah. you have no idea how many Australian messages I get and Canadian people that are just sick and tired of that shit. Mm -hmm. Guys, just because of this conversation, your story, which is amazing, Amy, thank you. I'm going to go buy a gun today. Nice. That's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> I might even buy two. But uh, all right, I'm going to buy a gun for everybody. Like, go yeah. for it. You yeah. get a gun. You get a gun. You get a gun. You get a gun. You get a gun.